Hello, I'm LaDonna Vohar, and I'm the producer for Friday Night Live at the Art Museum, Greater Lafayette. Now, historically, on the last Fridays of the month, we've brought musicians in to perform in our galleries. But because of COVID, we've had to switch to a virtual format. But however, we continue to strive to bring art and creativity to the community during these trying times. Hi, I'm Lori Amick, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors here at the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette. LaDonna and I have put together this presentation of pre-recorded performances with the help of numerous dedicated local musicians. Now, I would like to share the mission statement for the Art Museum. The mission of the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette is to celebrate the power of art, to inspire, instruct, challenge, and build community through collections, exhibitions, events, educational, and cultural programs. The arts provide a language for all facets of our multicultural, multinational community to find a common ground or to learn about our differences. But this is not a new phenomenon here at the Art Museum. The very first piece of artwork the museum collected was purchased in 1911. It's the Cruise of the Elida by F. Louis Mora. And Mora was a native of Uruguay and a naturalized American citizen. Our theme for tonight is winter, and we have a sampling of the diverse ways that our community celebrates this season. In addition to the music, we're also going to share some scenes of winter from art pieces in our permanent collection. And LaDonna and I will be giving you a little bit of information about the background of the artist or the piece as we share these images. So please enjoy the art and the music as we spend some time chilling out. Hi, I'm Chris. This is my buddy Lane. Hey Lane, what's your favorite holiday movie? Home Alone. Home Alone. We're gonna do Run Run Rudolph by Chuck Berry from Home Alone for you. Ready buddy? Mm -hmm. Out of all the reindeers, you know you're the mastermind. Run Run Rudolph, Randolph ain't too far behind. Run Run Rudolph, Santa's gotta make it to town. Santa, make him hurry, tell him he can take the freeway down. Run, run, Rudolph, I'm reeling like a merry-go-round. Said Santa to a boy child, what have you been longing for? All I want for Christmas is a rock and roll electric guitar. And then away went Rudolph, whizzing like a shooting star. Santa's gotta make it to town Santa make him hurry Tell him he can take the freeway down Run, run, Rudolph I'm reeling like a merry-go-round Alright, Lane, play some heart for me Make it to town. Santa, make him hurry. Tell him he can take the freeway down. We'll run, run, Rudolph. I'm reeling like a merry-go-round. Said Santa to a girl child, "What would you like most to get? A little baby doll that can cry, sleep, drink, and wet." Then away when Rudolph, whizzing like a saber jet. Run, run, Rudolph, Santa's gotta make it to town. Santa, make him hurry, tell him he can take the freeway down. Run, run, Rudolph, I'm reeling like a merry-go-round. Run, run, Rudolph, I'm reeling like a merry-go-round. The title of this woodblock engraving is Fendig Home, created by Lillian Fendig, and it was a gift from William and Sharon Theobald. 
Lillian Fendig was born in London in 1912 and died in Rensselaer in 1985. During World War II, Lillian served as a volunteer in charge of rehabilitation arts and crafts for the American Red Cross. And that's when she met her future husband, Ralph, and moved to his hometown of Rensselaer, where she continued her artistic career. Lillian painted still lifes, florals, landscapes, and portraiture, but she also designed her own clothes and was active in theater. And in 1947, she began creating a series of woodblock prints to use as Christmas greetings for family and friends. And she continued this tradition for 13 years. These beautiful prints were reprinted from the original woodblocks in 1999 by Catherine Clark of Twin Rocker Paper in Brookston, Indiana. Lillian became a member of the Hoosier Salon. She exhibited over 60 paintings, had 20 solo exhibitions and won more than 40 prizes in juried competitions. Her paintings remain in many public and private collections throughout Indiana and the Midwest. My name is Derek Coleman, and this is the Christmas song, or as some people like to call it, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. a rookwood vase made by Lenora Asbury in 1916. It was a gift to the museum from Hilda Pritzker and Dr. and Mrs. Alan Pritzker, and it was accepted into our collection in 1996. Lenore was the middle daughter of Frank and Elizabeth Whitehead Asbury, and she was born in 1866 in Ohio. Her family moved to Warren County, Indiana sometime before 1870. There, her father joined the dry good business of his father-in-law. Nimrod Whitehead. So Lenora's grandfather's name was Nimrod Whitehead. That's quite yep, unusual. It was. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, Lenora started working at the Rookwood Pottery sometime before 1895, and she worked there for about 36 years. She had two sisters, Kate and Pearl, and neither, neither Lenore or her sisters ever married, but they lived together their entire lives. Little is known about her artistic training, but she is recognized for her painterly use of beautiful blue glazes. 
Currently, this piece is on display as part of our newest exhibit entitled Idiosyncratic. Hi there, I'm Scott Greeson. My name is Vicki Maris Greeson. And we're singer-songwriters from Lafayette, Indiana. And you know, one of the things we really enjoy is the artistic endeavors in our community. And uh, the Art Museum is very special to us. Our band, Scott Greeson and Trouble with Monday, or parts of our band have done the Friday Night Lives. And we want to support the Arts Museum and the artists in our community any way we possibly can. And uh, you know, in this season, uh, we've all had this uh, kind of a different year, not kind of a different year, but a very different year. And <laughs> we need to bring joy to each other through the arts. And today, Vicki's gonna share a song with you that she wrote and, and people really seem to enjoy it. it now, this song's a few years old. She wrote it on Christmas Eve. I'm gonna let Vicki talk about it. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. The song that we're going to play for you as part of this compilation project uh, by the Art Museum is called Journey for a King. It's often referred to by us as well as uh, people who have enjoyed listening to it, the donkey song. You can call it either. We're okay with either of those names. Thank you for 
the extra steps tonight, boy. Mary could not make it on her own. No, you thought your work today was over. But we need your help to bring our baby home. No, you thought your work today was over. Thank you for the help to bring him home. Good evening and welcome to the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette's 2020 holiday party with music, art, and the opening of three new art exhibitions. The museum galleries will reopen on January 7th and you'll be able to reserve a visiting time online beginning on the 4th. In the meantime, we hope you'll explore the many artist presentations, gallery views, and past Friday night live performances that are available on our website and our YouTube channel. The rest of this evening's chilling out performances will be separated with brief looks at some wonderful works of art from the museum's permanent collection featuring seasonal scenes. But before our celebration begins, I want you to know about three new exhibits that are installed in our galleries. Journey into Landscape features works in oil and pastel by award-winning Indiana artist Carol Strachwasson. Her interpretations of the land around us range in style from impressionistic to abstract. The Rudiments of Supri is an installation of large mixed media panels by Boyd Smith, a former curator of the Black Cultural Center now the curator of the new U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Museum in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We're happy to have Boyd bring his work here. The idiosyncratic exhibit in the Wild Gallery presents a range of interesting and quirky works of art from the permanent collection, which defy definition. This show is presented by the Art Museum's curator, Michael Crothers. Well, please join me in thanking the Purdue Black Cultural Center, First Source Bank, Keystone Architecture, Purdue Federal Credit Union, and the Art League for their support. And we're so grateful for the gifts of talents by tonight's performers and to Lori Amick and LaDonna Vohar for this awesome production. Enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. It's me, Ebony, from Ebony and the Ruckus. And I'm excited to be here with you to celebrate this holiday season and with our friends from the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette. I've got a couple of folks joining me this evening, Scott Pizera and Drew Alkire. We're going to bring you a special song that's been near and dear to me since I was a youngster. Not every holiday song needs to be about sleighs, reindeer, Santa Claus coming down the chimney. There's also some warm and fuzzy songs that are just about what it's like to have that special someone near and dear to you on a cold winter's night. So we'll be sharing, I've got my love to keep me warm. My favorite version happened to be by Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. And while we're not going to do a version quite like that one, we hope you enjoy what we've put together for you. Happy holidays from Ebony and the Ruckus. Oh 
Christopher Brown created this piece titled Snow and Ice. Now, he often paints figures and landscapes from memory in addition to drawing on motifs from his photography. This lithograph, which is a method of printing, was a gift from Elaine and Jack Perlman collection in 2009. Christopher believes the experience of painting is discovering this thing that's inside of him that's been waiting to come out that he didn't even know was there. Christopher's images often have human crowds that contain looming or silhouetted figures with the uncanny effect of distorted perspective. He currently lives and works in Berkeley, California. Hi, my name is Ted Arthur, and I grew up in West Lafayette, but now live in New York. This next piece was written by Vince Guaraldi, and growing up, it was something I always remember playing around this time of the year. You may recognize it. It's Linus and Lucy. Happy holidays, everyone. This painting is called Winter Landscape and it's by Oren Draver. It's an oil painting that was a gift of Robert and Ellen Hahn in 2011. Oren was born in 1895 in Nebraska, then later in life he moved to Richmond, Indiana. When he was a young boy, he would draw mostly cartoons that his father would hang in his office. Some of Oren's favorite things to paint were quiet scenes of birch trees with reflective pools or creeks. This pastoral winterscape represents his ideals to perfection. Hello there, and happy winter to all. My name is Eli Shirley Hudson, and I'm a classical guitarist based in West Lafayette. I'm really excited to be able to share some music with you tonight, and I'm especially excited to share with you this piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's the prelude from his first cello suite. And I picked this piece tonight because it gives me a real sense of warmth um, whenever I play it and whenever I hear it. And I hope that it can just do the trick for you as well, um, keeping you warm on, on this cold winter night. So I hope you enjoy the prelude from the first cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. Thank you. 
the title of this etching is Christ Church Indianapolis uh, by George Joseph Mess, and it was printed in 1937. Uh, in this, he depicted a swirling snow scene of Christ Church Episcopal Cathedral, a monument circle in Indianapolis on Christmas Eve. It was a gift to the museum from Ben Rifter in 1988, and this print is really small. It's only about three and three quarter inches tall by two and three quarter inches wide. George studied with the painter William Forsyth at the Heron School of Art in Indianapolis. And it was in one of Forsyth's class that he met his future wife, Evelyn Bernlower. Um, she was also going to go on to become a notable Indiana artist. George's work is represented in numerous public collections, including the Indianapolis Museum of Art and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Upon his death in 1962, George's wife, Evelyn, noted that this was one of his most popular prints. The Art Museum of Greater Lafayette also has works by both his wife, Evelyn, and his brother, Gordon, in our permanent collection. Hi, I'm Yolene. Some people might know me from Open Mic Night for, uh, at Professor Joe's from last year. I'm currently a PhD student in Purdue, and I hope you enjoy this song. Hi guys, my name is Irina, and this is the beloved guitar that I'm going to play on today. Yolan and I prepared to sing a winter song to you guys and hope you guys enjoy it. is the name of this painting by Merlin Glenn in a bit. It was purchased by the Lafayette Art Association in 1942. Merlin developed an interest in art at an early age when he began sketching on wrapping paper at his father's grocery store. Um, he went to Des Moines University at the age of 15. His father was against him pursuing art as a career, so he entered college in liberal arts. Um, just out of college, he got requests to do portrait paintings, which he did throughout his career. And during World War II, Merlin produced calendar pinup girls that were known as Merlin girls. 
which appear in publications including magazines, calendars, playing cards, and postcards. He also lived in California for a time where he painted portraits of famous Hollywood movie stars, like Carol Lombard, who, by the way, was also a Hoosier. So Merlin wrote four instructional art books, and he was known for his expertise in the fundamental uses of color. He did experimentation that was developed into the theory of basic color concept. He was also a spokesperson for Grumbacher Artist Materials, which is a very well-known successful company for art supplies. Hi, it's not Santa, it's Tito. I'm one of the members of uh, Clava Cariba Band. It, we, we've been invited this year to, uh, to be with you guys and share our music uh, through uh, arts and, and, and music and museum, especially, especially uh, chilling out. So for us, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be with you guys. We thank you for letting us be part of this. We thank you that we can share this music that I hope you guys will like. This year has been difficult for everybody. Uh, we have to be safe. And for me, well, the music is uh, like the medicine for the soul and for the mind. So I hope you enjoy our music. And I hope to see you in the future next year. You guys have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye. Yeah. the Golden and Wood organ at Trinity United Methodist Church in Lafayette. Today I'll be playing Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah.
Now this painting is titled Scene of an Alley. It is painted by Will Varder, who was born in 1871. And this painting was a gift of Mrs. Eleanor Baird Milford Christensen from the estate of her mother, Eleanor Ross Baird in 1977. Will Vodder was a landscape painter known for his loose impressionistic style. He was raised in Greenfield, Indiana and began his career as an illustrator. He illustrated 11 volumes of poems written by James Whitcomb Riley, the famous Hoosier poet. And Will moved to Nashville, Indiana in 1908 to join the Brown County Art Colony. He was a well-loved man who always took time to enjoy life and he would play horseshoes or checkers with the locals and he used locals for models. An eight-year-old girl posed for Will as Little Orphan Annie in 1916, which was a poem by James Whitcomb Riley that later inspired comic strip, plays, radio programs, television shows, and movies. This painting is one of LaDonna and I's favorite in the museum collection. Um, his use of loose brush strokes and beautiful color. And even in the whites of the snow, he uses pinks and blues and purples. And it just is one of our favorites because of his masterly use of the paintbrush. Hi, I'm Ron Shoemaker from the Green Room Rockers. Today I'm playing Frosty the Snowman, uh, my rendition of it, uh, an oldie but a goodie, um, flying as a solo band today. <laughs> was the Inuit artist of this print titled The Drummer. Kageganek's work has been interpreted in many different media, copper engraving, stone cut, stencil, lithography, and etching. So from the beginning, Kageganek's represented Arctic wildlife in his work, often monumental in scale. He was a prominent community leader and he helped form the West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative in 1959. And in 1978, four of King Gang and X images were included in a limited edition portfolio released by the World Wildlife Commission. The permanent collection contains seven sub collections, including the Albert Ewell Collection of Inuit Art. In 2008, Albert Ewell donated his collection of 37 stone Inuit sculptures to the Art Museum. Since then, several other important donations have been included which included Inuit paintings, carvings, and prints. And they've been made by Mona Burke and from the estate of Derek Davenport. Shalom. I am Rabbi Karen Fanwick from Temple Israel in West Lafayette. I've been asked to introduce you to the holiday of Hanukkah that the Jewish people are celebrating this week. It began this year at sundown on December 10th and continues for eight days until sundown on December 18th when the holiday ends. The word Hanukkah, or Hanukkah, as it is often referred, means dedication 
in Hebrew. The Saint Day celebration commemorates the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem after it was retaken by the Maccabees. The Maccabees were a band of Jewish warriors that sought to defeat their Greek Syrian oppressors in the years 167 to 160 BCE. As the story goes, the oppressors left the temple in ruins. After reclaiming the temple and seeking to repair the damage, they found just enough purified oil to burn in the lamp for one night. The legend is that the oil miraculously burned for eight days and nights, thus the miracle of the oil and the length of the celebration. To celebrate the holiday, Jews typically eat potato or even cheese latkes fried in oil to celebrate the miracle of the oil. We also eat sufganyot, which are donuts filled with either jelly or custard and also fried in oil. Both of these holiday foods are delicious, by the way. But the main part of the holiday is the lighting of the Hanukkah or menorah that holds nine candles, one for each night, and a helper candle called the shamash to light them. Each night the menorah gains a new candle. Tonight is the beginning of the last day of Hanukkah. So we place eight candles and the helper candle in the menorah. I will now light the candles and do the blessings for the lighting. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Asher kichanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu l'hadlik ner shel Chanukah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Sh'asa nisim l'avoteinu, Imoteinu, Mayamihim, Hahem, Mahasman, Hazem. And those blessed means, Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, who hallows us with meat's vote, commanding us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. And blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, who performed wondrous deeds for our ancestors in days of old at this season. And those words mean, let us kindle the lights. I wish all of you a season filled with light, health, happiness, and peace. The Maccabee children with thanks that their light didn't die. Light one candle for the pain they endured when their right to exist was denied. Light one candle for the terrible sacrifice, justice and freedom demand. 
never light one candle for the wisdom to know when the peacemaker's time is at hand. Don't let the lights go out, it's lasted for so many years. Don't let the light go out, let it shine through our hope and our tears. Light one candle for the strength that we need To never become our own foe And light one candle for those who are suffering Pain we learned so long ago Light one candle for all we believe in That anger not tear us apart and light one candle to find us together with peace as a song in our hearts. Don't let the light go out, it's lasted for so many years. Don't let the light go out, let it shine through our hope and our tears. Don't It's lasted for so many years Don't let the light go out Let it shine through our hope and our tears Morning Kits, it was painted by Lawrence Rudelek. And this well-known Hoosier plein air artist, who went by Larry, was born in July of 1949. Sadly, he just passed away this year in February. But Larry gave Morning Kiss as a gift to the museum in 2014. Larry made his career in graphic arts. He was told that he couldn't make a living painting pictures. After four years, he retired and became a full-time artist, working both in the studio and plein air. Larry said, his work is only successful when he can feel more coming from it than he sees coming from it. He didn't paint every detail, but gave the viewers just enough to finish the painting in our mind's eye. Hi, I'm Bill Bros. Welcome to the Lindbergh Village Fireside Jam. We have a little story tonight that we want to tell you. Maybe just a little bit different version than you've heard before. Santa Claus came last year and had a problem with his deer. Rumor has it, they say it's true, that Santa had a drink or two. Well, things went south when they took to flight, and they ran over Grandma that fateful night. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Coming home from our house Christmas Eve You might not believe in Santa But as for me and Grandpa, we believe Well, there was no investigation and there was no litigation You see, Santa went home scot-free And the only thing that comes of this, the only thing I see is sorrow for old grandpa and heartache for old me. Grandma got run over by a reindeer coming home from our house Christmas Eve. You might not believe in Santa, but as for me and grandpa, we believe. Before our final song of the evening, I'd like to take a moment and remind you to join the museum. That's easy to do on our website. Or make a donation to the museum. That's easy to do on our website. Or visit our online store. Oh, that's easy to do on our website too. I'd really like to thank LaDonna for coordinating all of our musicians tonight. And I'd really like to thank Lori for all of her technical uh, efforts. I mean, without them, we wouldn't have been able to make this video happen. But we would especially like to thank our musicians. Annalise Drake. 
Ted Arthur, Bill Gross, Derek Coleman, Ebony Barrett Kennedy, and Scott Greason, Vicki Maris, Chris and Lane June, Rabbi Karen, Bobby Curry, Yulin Liu, Irina Wong, Eli Shelley Hudson, Ron Shoemaker, Lisa Drake, Elaine Ehrlich, Tom Herr, and Scott Nasera, and Drew Elkire. We hope that this evening has met the museum's mission to celebrate the power of art to inspire, instruct, challenge, and build community. And so please enjoy the last song of our show. And we're so glad you joined the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette and spending your evening just chilling out with us. Hello, my name is Annalise Drake. I was raised in West Lafayette and I now live in Los Angeles, California. Tonight I will be singing Silent Night and I want to wish you all a wonderful holiday and to stay safe and to stay warm. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy Jesus, Lord, at thy 